Hello everyone, this is Sam Spade, and welcome to the next tutorial in Git and GitHub for GameMaker. In this tutorial, we'll be talking about pulling, cloning, and forking. So what do these three things, pulling, cloning, and forking, have in common? Well, they're all means of getting information from another repository. Let's start with pulling. Pulling gets information from your remote repository. So in the GitHub Fundamentals tutorial, we talked about connecting your local repository with the repository on GitHub creating a remote branch. Pulling is how you get information from that remote branch to your local repository. It's actually a combination of two different git commands, git fetch, which gets the information, and git merge, which updates all of the information. But it's normally just done as one single command, git pull. The thing to keep in mind though is that there is a merge hidden behind this. Merges can cause conflicts, and this isn't something to be scared of or worried about. It's part of working with source control but it is something to be mindful of. It might be worth looking up how to handle merge conflicts. We will have a tutorial on this down the road, but this is one of the first things that we've done that can cause uh, a merge conflict, so I thought I would bring it up here. To pull information, all you have to do is type git pull. This will update your local repository from your remote branch. Let's actually jump over to GameMaker and show a very simple example of this. So here we are in GameMaker, our project from before. We're in the create event of our test object, and we have these two lines. I can come over here to GitHub inside that repository. We're in our create event. We have the same two lines, and let's edit these lines. Okay, I'm just going to type show message, a change made in GitHub, and then I'm going to hit commit down here. And now the create event for this repository on GitHub is different from the one that we have on our local computer. But of course, if we switch back over to GameMaker, that's not reflected yet because we haven't done git pull. But we can pull up git bash. Let's do a quick status check. Note that as far as our local repository cares, we're actually up to date. We could do git fetch, and then we would see that we weren't up to date. But let's just do git pull, which will both fetch and then merge immediately. There you go. You can see that we made some changes down here to the create event. Git status, still up to date. And if we come back to GameMaker, we can see that GameMaker has noted a change. We want to reload, and here we go. But, and I didn't even notice this, I made a mistake here, so let's add in this. Now if we type git add, git commit, fix the typo. Now it reflects those changes, we can do git status. We're ahead of our origin or our remote branch by one commit, git push, everything is up to date. And if we come over to GitHub and refresh, we can see the change reflected here. So there you go, a very basic way to have a multi-repository workflow where the first thing you do when you start working on any repository is first you pull from your other repository or if you've designated a repository to be central such as GitHub, pulling from GitHub. Then you work, you commit, you push, work, commit, and push, work, commit, and push, and so on. So if you are over here, you pull the changes from GitHub, work, commit, push, work, commit, push, so GitHub is being updated to reflect the work you're doing here. And then if you go over to computer B, you pull so that all of the changes on computer A come over to computer B, work, commit, and push. And then of course they're up here and you can repeat the process going back and forth. As long as you're consistent with this, you probably won't have any merge conflicts. But where that could happen is let's say you forget to pull first. So you've done some work on computer B, you pushed everything up to GitHub, so GitHub has changes to file X. Now, if A pulls immediately, file X on A's computer will be updated. But let's say that when you're working on computer A, you forget to do that, you change files on file X, and now you have two completely different file Xs. You have one up here and one up here. If you were to try to pull now, you would get a merge conflict. And again, that's not necessarily a bad thing. When you're working with source control, that is definitely going to happen. It's part of working with source control it can even be a good thing, allowing you to work and develop things in different ways simultaneously. But it does require a little bit of extra knowledge to handle. So again, if you're going to do that or you run into that, uh, just look up how to handle merge conflicts. And again, we'll have a tutorial on that uh, down the road. Next, let's move on to cloning. Cloning copies a remote repository. So it's a lot like git init, except that instead of creating a blank new repository, it takes an existing repository and copies it entirely over. And you can do it with remote repositories. The way you do this is by typing git clone, then the path. And this could be a path, a local file on your own computer, but generally it's going to be a URL 
to a GitHub repository or some other remote repository or some other repository that's not on your computer. And then you don't need to supply the directory name, but the third argument is what that folder will be named. So it will take the default name of the folder that it's already in, which may be what you want, or maybe you wanna give it a new name, and then you can supply that by adding your own directory name. This will clone the repository into the folder that you're currently in. But let's just actually experiment with this and do it a couple times. So here I am looking at my public repositories on GitHub. So these repositories should all be repositories that you can see as well. Let's clone one of these to my computer. So we'll go to struct alarms. We will go up here and we will get the URL. So here we can clone with HTTPS. So we will copy the URL by clicking on this button. And now you can go into the folder because remember that cloning will create a copy of the folder in the folder that you're in. We can open git bash. And I believe on Mac, I'm not positive, but I believe on Mac, you can just open the terminal in this folder. But I'll be using git bash on Windows. And now there's no git repository in this folder. And you can see that if I say git status, there's not a git repository in this folder. But even though there's no git repository, I can still do git clone, paste in the URL. And here we go. We have the entire repository on my computer, as simple as that. You can even open git on this folder and type git status or git log pretty one line and see the entire git history, which by the way is an important note. If you are going to make a repository public, the entire repository, the history and so on is going to be public as well. You can also check out the various branches and I would have the ability to push because of course this is my own repository, but if you were to clone this repository, rather than the fork and then clone, which we'll talk about in a moment, you would not have the ability to push. The other thing I would say about cloning is I would highly recommend checking out the different optional commands. There are a bunch of useful ones, such as not pulling down the entire history in case you don't want it. For larger projects, this might be a good idea. And just a bunch of other interesting things you can do. But there you go, Git cloning. It's as simple as that. It really is incredible how easy it is. And frankly, I find it kind of amazing. And this is why Git, especially when used with something like GitHub, is so powerful and opens the door to so many different places. Next, let's talk about forking. Forking is similar to cloning in some ways, but it creates a copy of a GitHub repository on your GitHub account. Essentially, forking is something you do on GitHub, not in Git. It retains a link to the upstream repository, the repository that you forked, and you can make pull requests to send changes back to the upstream repository. So let's say person A has a repository that you like, so you fork it on your GitHub account. You can now make changes on your own repository. You aren't allowed to make changes on their repository if they haven't given you permission, but you can make changes on your own version of that repository, and then you make a pull request. And it's called a pull request because pulling is how you get information from a different repository into your own. So you might think that it should be called a push, which is what you do when you push changes to your repository. But you don't actually have the authority to make changes on someone else's repository if they haven't given that to you. And so what you're doing is you, you are asking them to pull your changes. So again, they are the ones who do the pulling and you're just asking them to do that. So it's called a pull request. So if cloning and forking sound very similar, that's because they are. But there are some very important differences. Forking is done on the GitHub account, on your GitHub account, and it creates a GitHub repository. Cloning is done using Git, and it will create a repository on your computer. Both cloning and forking retain a link to the repository that they were cloned or forked from, at least by default. But changes to a forked repository can only be merged via a pull request. The person you're making that request of has the option to accept or deny all or part of what you're asking. Whereas changes to a clone repository can be directly pushed, but only if you have permission. So you could clone a repository you have on GitHub on your account to your own computer and push directly there because you have permission to do that since it's your account, but you wouldn't have that with someone else's. So here's a diagram of the two. With forking, you have the original repository on GitHub, you fork it, and then you have the forked repository on GitHub. So generally, though not necessarily, this would be on someone else's account, and then this would be on your account. And then to get changes from the forked repository to the original repository, you make a pull request. Whereas with cloning, you have the original repository on GitHub. Again, it can be yours or someone else's, and you clone it, 
and you get a clone repository on your local computer. You can then push changes to the original repository, but only if you have permission. So normally, what you do is you have a combination of forking and cloning, where you have the original repository on GitHub, and then you fork that repository, so you have your version of it on GitHub, and then you clone that repository to your computer so that you can work on it, and then you push changes up to your version of the repository on GitHub, and then you can make a pull request of the original repository. I would actually encourage people to experiment with this on GitHub. Fork the repository for this project, it's public, clone it to your local computer, make some changes, push those changes to your repository, and then make a pull request. And let's actually jump over to GitHub and demonstrate this. To fork a repository, all you have to do is find a repository that's visible to you. So this is going to be one that's public or that you have access to. And then click the fork button. Now I've already done this, so I can't do it here. But it really is as simple as clicking the fork button. And if I come over to my own version of the repository, now you can see this is what happened when I did it. You can see that it still has a link to the original. And now I can copy the HTTPS. I can go back to Git Bash and type git clone. And now I have my own version of this repository on my computer. But this version is a version of the repository that is on my GitHub account. And then my GitHub repository is connected to Kazaris's repository. So I could make changes on my local computer. I could push them here as I've done. And then I could make a pull request by going here to Kazaris and he could choose to accept it or not. So to follow along, I would suggest make a change on GitHub and pull it to your local repository, but keep it very simple for now and remember to pull before changing anything on your local repository. Clone some remote repositories, either your own or some public repositories of other people. There are some great public repositories for GameMaker out there. Maybe experiment with forking and cloning the repository for this tutorial series and trying to make a pull request. So in summary, pulling, cloning, and forking are all ways to get information from other repositories. Pulling gets information from a linked remote repository. Cloning copies a repository using Git, while forking creates a copy of that repository on GitHub. And then of course you can use a combination of forking and cloning to suggest changes to someone else's public repository. I have a bunch of resources here links to the Git manual on pulling and cloning. There's a lot of additional options you can add to those arguments that change how they work, as well as a link to how to fork a repository in GitHub and an excellent article on cloning versus forking, which if anything I said it was unclear, I highly recommend reading the article. It goes into even more detail, but is still very readable and understandable. And that's it. Thanks for watching.